All right, the periodic table. You get a copy of the periodic table in your test. Here it is. Look, it's a periodic table of the elements. They're all elements, every single one of them. If it's not on this list of elements, it's not an element. Look, you won't find water. It's not there. Water's not an element. It's a compound of hydrogen and oxygen. It's a compound, not an element. Let's study it more carefully. The list of all the known elements is organized by increasing atomic number. We've already looked at the atomic number, right? Number of electrons and protons. There's two main groups on the periodic table. The metals and the non-metals. These are all metals. These are all non-metals. They're separated by this line. This zigzag line. Some people call it the staircase. We've got metals on this side, like iron, copper, silver, gold. And we've got non-metals on this side, like oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, sulfur. This group here in the middle is called the transition metals. Let's put them in a little box. There we go. There we go. So we've got the transition metals. They're called the transition metals because they're transitioning from the metals to the non-metals. Now we've also got a small group called the metalloids. You'll see they're the ones that are kind of... They're touching the... Um, they're touching the zigzag. So they're almost, they're sort of not sure whether they're metals or non-metals. So we call them metalloids. They're a bit like both. You see, metals have electrons that they sort of let go wherever they want, whereas non-metals keep hold of their electrons. These metalloids, they can't really decide. They've got some of each. We've got non-metals on this side, and so uh, I'm going to colour those like a little light blue. Oh, whoops. Here we go. Colour all these non-metals light blue. I bet you'll do a nice job, but, you know. And... We've got hydrogen over here. Hydrogen, they put it in group one. It's not really in group one. It's, usually, it's really just an exception. It doesn't really have a home, hydrogen. So just watch out for it. It's not really a group one metal. Now, I'm coloring everything else in yellow because everything else is a metal. See, there's a lot of metals on the periodic table. Okay, so we've got all these all these metals, we've got the metalloids, and then we've got the non-metals, plus hydrogen. Now, I want you to write up here something that's pretty important to remember. Groups have similar properties. That means they're kind of the same. And groups go up and down. So this is a group here. All of this group here, group 1, which is known as the um, which is known as the alkali metals. Let's draw a box around the alkali metals.
They're called the alkali metals, and what's special about them is that if you drop them in water, they either catch fire or they blow up. The alkali metals. It's kind of unusual, but they all do it. Lithium just fizzes a bit, and sodium fizzes and pops. Potassium catches fire and sometimes goes bang. Rubidium makes a big bang. Cesium and francium, they're kind of unstable. I'm not sure if anyone's brave enough to drop them in water. But these guys over here, they don't do it. It's an up-down thing. This group over here is called the halogens. This one here. They're all very reactive as well. And they're actually all poisonous. The halogens. You need to know the name of those. And this group, this group here, is called the noble gases. They're a very important group. We'll talk about them some more. Whoops, I spelled it wrong. The noble gases. And along with the transition metals, those are the most important group names you need to know. Other things we should do, we should look at which elements are which elements are liquids at room temperature. Let's put a purple box around those. We've got two of them. We've got mercury down here, which is a metal and a liquid. Pretty weird. Now we've got bromine. It's a, it's a liquid at room temperature. Now we've got lots that are gases. And... I think your instructions say to put a red box around them, but I see I've already used a red box. So let's put a dark green box around them instead. So that's things like nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, helium, neon, all the no all of the noble gases are gases at room temperature. And the last thing to do is worry about those ionic charges. Remember we calculated ionic charges earlier? Well, there's a shortcut. All of group 1 are plus 1. All of group 2 are plus 2. So calcium is a plus 2 ion. Then we jump over the transition metals. This group's plus 3. And starting at the other side, we go minus 1, minus 2 minus 3. Of course, these two guys don't form ions. These guys don't really either. Some people say plus or minus 4. They don't really form ions very often. And if you can keep your periodic table marked up like that, it's going to be a useful tool. Um, something, to th something you want to be able to visualize in your exam. The second page of your handout is really just a bunch of details, things that you need to remember. You need to remember that hydrogen isn't part of group 1. You need to remember it's very reactive. It's actually what acid... no. It's very reactive. Alkali metals, very reactive. So are the halogens. That's interesting. The plus 1 and the minus 1 are extremely reactive. And these transition metals... They're kind of what we think of as metals. They're shiny, they're good conductors of heat and electricity, and they might be plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. They actually tell you. They'll write little Roman numerals next to them to say what charge they are. So on your first page you hand out, it's gives you instructions on what we just did. We colored the metalloids light green, the metals yellow, the non-metals light blue. We traced the zigzag. We drew a purple box around liquids, a red box around gases. And then we labeled all of our groups. And we also wrote that groups have similar properties and groups go up and down. Important to remember.